All right. I just wanted to cover off of some of the precursors that need to go into um, the air dispersion modeling. So I, I pulled up our, our main dashboard, which shows the emissions and the emissions summaries for our emissions inventory. So as you can see in our demo site, we have chosen to collect the, all of the data for the state of Texas, and we can see the individual facility locations across the state. I can zoom in a little bit on the map, and I'm just looking at the summary by county of the various pollutants. So we can see the NOx, the CO, the SO2 um, contributions um, on an annualized basis. If I scroll down a little bit, we can also see some of the graphs showing how the, how the, the various uh, counties are, are, are admitting. While that's, that's useful as a, as a precursor, we also need to look at the facility dashboard um, so that we can look at individual facilities. And the facility dashboard allows us to understand what's going on at individual facilities that we might want to model with. So as we can see, we have the Clean Harbors facility here located at the top. We can scroll down just a little bit. We can see a location on the map. So we can see where the facility is located. If I scroll back a little bit, I can see the um, the map, and I can see its location in reference to the continuum. I can see the list of pollutants that are being emitted, and I can also see the release points. So here we can see there's 23 uh, release points. So the facilities coupled with the emissions inventory give us the ability to start doing modeling. So I'm going to start over here, and I'm going to go to the ADM dashboard. Now the ADM dashboard is useful for both the, the enterprise as well as eight regulatory agencies because it allows uh, policy and decision makers the ability to look at a glance what the regulatory compliance is um, for the, um, from the air dispersion modeling. We can choose and see the model runs. We can see the number of MET stations in my study, the number of discrete sensitive receptors. So you can upload um, hospitals, schools, um, retirement homes, those types of uh, gathering centers, shopping centers to be part of your modeling study automatically. We can also get a summary of the number of buildings we're using in our model. A little further down the page, we can see here, we can see the two model, the two pollutants that I actually modeled. So we can see the, the ammonia, we can see that it was done on a 24-hour basis, and we can see that the maximum MOS site concentration for the year that we modeled was 25.8 micrograms per cubic meter. Um, because there is no standard, it's not listed, and we can see the impact from the, the two facilities that we modeled together in, in conjunction with the ammonia. If I select the sulfur dioxide, we get an update. Here we can see its maximum MOS value is 851 micrograms per cubic meter. Using the National Ambient Air Quality Standard in the United States, we can see that, um, unfortunately, based on the current emission rates, that we are 200 percent above the actual the regulatory limit. Um, the model when it does the uh, types of analyses, will automatically apply this and, and summarize this value so you can see at a glance whether your airshed is having problems or not. This is great for a summary, but let's uh, go and look at the actual module and what we can do um, with the air dispersion modeling. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the ADM menu here at the top, and we can see some of the things that are available to us. So we have the complete MET data. Everything that we need to run the model is already available. Again, I have the list of receptors, so I can deep dive into that. And we can, get a, we can get a summary of all the receptors, so we can see where we have collected points, and we can see the pages and pages that we have here inside the, inside the model. So this was just something that we automatically imported and, and made available to, the, to this customer. So I'll go up and take, go back. We also managed the building um, automatically, so all the buildings that are done from your air dispersion modeling can be incorporated into the into the model. Go down and look at the tools that are available. Um, while we automatically link up with webmet.com to bring in the MET data automatically, if you have specialized site-specific MET data, you can upload it using a little wizard here using the upload MET data. If you want to import buildings, so if you have downwash studies you've already done with AirMod View, for example, you can also include them so you're not wasting time or losing data um, uh, that you've already invested in. We also have an automatic terrain processing system. So if you want to uh, do complex terrain, we already link up to the SRTM automatically, and you can bring that in with no, with no trouble. So once all of those things are presented, you are ready to run your model. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start with the model run portion. 
and I'm going to go ahead and access that, and we're going to queue up a quick model to show you how easy that is. So we have the ability to do a hotspot model run, which is what most people do for the regulatory compliance. There is receptor modeling, so if you are interested in specific sensitive uh, points on the map, you can also queue up those as a specialized run. And there's also regional modeling if you need to be con concerned with a particular area um, in your study area. So let's go ahead and do a, a hotspot model run. The first thing we need to do is select the emissions so we can see the annual emissions um, that are available, although we have other periods, so you could use January or monthly totals or even other specialized periods. We also have the ability to select the types of emissions. So in the inventory, because we have actuals, allowables, potentials, and maximums, we can choose amongst those types of emissions to be automatically included in our model to set the emission rate. So let me go on to the next step here by clicking next. Apologize, it takes a little bit of time to come up. And now we're going to look at the list of pollutants that we need to choose from. So I'm going to go ahead and select those. And I'm going to choose from a handful of the criteria pollutants that are in our inventory. So I'm going to say I want to run VOC, SO2, PM10, and say NOx and ammonia. And it will run all of these in succession through the batch module. So I'll go ahead and click Next. And then it will sift through the inventory, and it will find only those sources that are available. Um, but first, we need to tell it about the, the type of trim we want to process. So I'm going to go ahead and say I want to use flat. And then it comes up. Oh, my apologies. It comes up with the, with the grid. I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. And now it comes up with the facility. So I am going to select the Baytown facilities. It will select them. So since I have the 15 subsites that are available, I'm just going to check all that are available. And we're going to automatically go ahead and select all the release points for them when we run this. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. I'm going to name my scenario. So I'm just going to call this webinar number two. I can choose the averaging period. So I'm going to use the 24 hours um, averaging period that I'm interested. And I'm just going to leave my start and end date because I want to run for the whole year of 20, 2011. I'll click Next. And it's going to do some analysis. It's going to identify that some of the sources are not going to be modeled. It's just going to let me know. And I'm going to go ahead and move on and say, yes, it's OK, only the ones that are complete. I will get a nice summary of the model of what I'm about to do. The number of facilities, 15. The release point count of 1,125, because it's a very large facility five pollutants, annual, and so forth. It will give us a nice summary that allows us to understand what we do. Now, when I click Finish, it will send it out to our cloud processor for, for modeling. So while it gathers up the data, we can see in our queue, as it, as it brings up our queue, we can see a list of all the jobs that are out for processing. So we can see at the top, we can choose My Jobs. We can choose the current inventory. Or we can look at modeling that's occurred across all the inventories and by all people on my team. So we can see that there are other folks who have done some modeling, and we can see that my job is already starting to process. So we can see the status of it, and we can go um, and come back to this. Or um, if we are fortunate enough, we will get a notification at the top of the page when the model is done. While that processes, I'm going to go ahead and jump over to the map to look at some previously uh, modeled results that we've done. So here we are on the large map somewhat similar to the ADM dashboard, but this gives us more flexibility and control. We can see here. Um, that we're bringing up the individual release points, and we're also bringing up the facilities as I zoom in. I have the overlay control. I can see the facility. I can look at different layers. I can turn them on or off, so I can turn them all off. I can bring up the ambient mesh stations, and we can see that automatically the facility will show where it's going to draw the MET data from across the state. So that's kind of nifty. So let me turn that back on, and I'm going to zoom back on the release points. So now I'd like to bring up some of the uh, plots that I've done from the modeling. So I can click on this ammonia plot, and we can see that we modeled a couple of facilities and sites um, for ammonia. And here it's just giving us an isoplot showing us the impacts and the concentration. We get a nice color ramp across the bottom showing the lowest concentration to the peak concentrations. So we can see where the colors are and how deep they are. We can look at VOCs, for example, as another case. And we can see that it's concentrated around this particular facility. We can see where the peaks are by the colors. We can also do some, uh, some simple changes. So I can go and I can click on a particular plot, and I can change the color settings. So we can change all the, all the levels. We can change the colors as we need to. So for example, if I want to use like a dust color across the facility just to give me some, some different emphasis on the, on the color values, I can click Next, and I can click Finish. 
immediately it'll send it out to a, out to a, a processor and it will start processing. So while it's doing that, I can look again at some other plots such as toluene, and I can look at ethylbenzene and it should come up. Okay, well, while that's going on, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the reports that are available um, in the system. So not only do we have the isoplus plots, but we also can run some various um, reports to look at the various outputs. So one of the key reports is, is that once we've run a scenario, we can look at the maximum offsite concentration. We can pick, pick a particular scenario run. I can click Next. I can choose the ambient air quality standard that I want to run, and I click Finish, and it'll bring up the result. Again, here this is a nice summary of the results, so we can see the individual compounds that were run, what the emission rates were across all the facilities that were modeled, the maximum concentrations, and the timestamp and the location where they occurred. And we can see that for this case that uh, we didn't have any exceedances, and this is a good news. Um, we can also see some source contributions as well, and these are just some similar studies so that we can understand that we have we have lots of different sources being modeled. So this is just giving us an indicator of the source IDs, the emission rates that we're using, and their contribution. So this can be very helpful in understanding if you have particular sources that you want to optimize to reduce the concentrations, you can do so. At this point, I'd like to hand it back to Dr. Jesse so that he can uh, wrap up our uh, presentation, and I want to thank everyone.